Holy Spirit, I thank you. You're here in power already. You bless this congregation. And um, anyhow, um, I'm a prophetic intercessor. And if you don't know what that means, it just means you tune in and you see things in the Holy Spirit and then you bless people uh, based on what you see. And so I'm kind of wired that way. I'm a watchman. And so I regularly kind of just spend time in his presence and see what he's saying so I can agree with what the Father's saying. Um, anyways, about a week ago, I was in the Spirit and... I see really clearly uh, Pastor Dennis and Dr. Jen's faces in front of me, and I knew that the Holy Spirit had something to say um, because they're, they haven't normally been on my radar. Um, you know, I've been really focused on birthing what God's doing. You know, I'm planted at CSCL and at Morningstar right now, so I've kind of had laser laser focus on that. Um, I think probably one reason the Lord showed me their faces is because we are neighbors and we're connected. And it's kind of like we're all co-laborers together in this. So I'm just going to uh, read some of what I saw and then share some of what we talked about on the phone. Um, anyways, I saw a large door open over this fellowship. And it's f <laughs> it was right there. I hadn't been to this fellowship yet, but that... You know, that's where it was. A large door opened over the fellowship. And when it opened, the whole sanctuary was filled with pure white light. And if you're wondering what pure white light is, it's two things. It's the living Christ. And it's the light of the kingdom. Uh, the light that makes everything visible. The light of the kingdom of heaven. But this was a door of awakening. And uh, within the light, I could hear angels' voices, brilliant arrays of color and glory, and a warm spring wind that carried both rain and the scent of dew on it. Um, and the wind shook silver wind chimes that released a song of awakening that brought more angels. And it was the sound of the bride making herself ready. Um, that's Revelation. If you look at Revelation 21, it gives you a prophetic picture of everything I just said, really. Um, and as soon as the door opened, the whole room became filled with a manifestation of great glory and love. It was literally heaven on earth. Uh, the room I saw became a garden of delights in which the Father was pleased to walk with each one of his children in the cool of the day. As glorious as everything smelled and sounded and looked, it was the total love of the Father. The total love of the Father that actually caused the garden to grow. It became filled with sweet flowers and fragrances and fruit. And by the way, on the same day, you know, I'm not putting in a plug for Lowe's, but I've been wanting fruit trees and they had them on sale for $10. And I got three apple and two peach. So uh, there's, there's your fruitfulness. <laughs> Um, I also received this on the day that Daylight Savings Time happened. And so I felt like the Lord said that you were in a time of springing forward. The Lord says now is the time for your ministry and your fellowship to spring forward. And you are coming into a season of accelerated blessing. You've done much plowing and sown much seed. However, the season is here when the Father is going to bless all that you have done with a warm spring wind and rain from heaven. Do I need to point out the weather today? I also saw your hearts wondering if this season would end, but every time you had this thought, the warm spring wind would actually increase. This is because the wind is the wind of his love and glory, and now is the appointed time to awaken the bride. Um, before I share some of the stuff on the back here, I want to connect this to a prophetic experience I had about 15 years ago, back when I was a pizza delivery guy. Um, 
you know, I went and dropped off a couple sheet pizzas at a corporate office park. I come out and I see an angel standing outside the door crying. And as soon as I saw him, I felt all of his emotion, the love, the joy, the longing. And I asked him, why are you crying? And he almost couldn't get the words out. He said, because the bride is making herself ready. And then I looked up and I saw like a window open in heaven and there was this wind and it had all these raindrops and the scent of dew on it and it was making these silver wind chimes clink and uh, sing and it would bring multitudes of angels, the sound of the bride awakening. And it's the sound of spring as well because in spring... Everything that was dormant comes to life. Everything that has been dormant in you and in everyone in this fellowship is about to spring up in new life. Everything that was dormant is about to spring up in new life. Everything that was dormant is about to spring up to new life. The song of the bride is now awakening over this place. And you are going to sing together. Just like when the light, the lamb who is the light at the center of the new Jerusalem comes, every crystal in that building is lit up. And each one has a different frequency, a different song. But together there's a harmony that's released and it's the harmony of perfect love and the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace, and that's what is being released here. So, um, anyways, this wind was coming, and these multitudes of angels, and then this beautiful white train, which was like this bridal garment. And the train, it like began in heaven, but then it was resting on the earth. Because that's what he's releasing now, that we're connecting heaven with earth. Um, so, so I also saw Pastor Jason. And in the vision, there was like a swirling around him, like the waters were being stirred. And he was holding a brass nozzle, which was also a blast nozzle of the anointing. And there was a trumpet blast on him. And that swirling, the Lord has repeatedly spoken to me through swirling. It's from Song of Solomon, the dance of Mahanaim, which is the dance of two camps. It's like two camps dancing together. Those two camps are the camp of men and the camp of angels. It is the intertwining of the heavenly and earthly realms in the kingdom, the new Jerusalem on the earth. Um, but there's an increase of authority, of prophetic authority on that. Um, okay, sorry, uh, a few more things. It's hard to sometimes sort it out here. Okay, so anyways, the same day, so this happened in the morning, I send the email, and I'm running late for a 5K race at CSCL because the race was also beginning this morning, that morning. And I run out with my boys and I'm locked out of the house. And, um, you know, I swore my neighbor gave the key back to me. I go and knock once and no answer and I'm getting frustrated, call my wife, she's getting ready to leave. And I pray, I should have done that to start with, and I go and knock again, and he answers, and he has the key. So there's a race, an accelerated blessing, an acceleration this fellowship is about to walk into, but your neighbors are the key to entering into that, right? Um, so the other thing I saw was that um, Pastor Dennis and Dr. Jen are the keystone to a new threshold. And I saw a threshold made out of Jerusalem stone, which, you know, is beautiful. It has all those different colors. Um, 
but that you are a key stone in what is about to unfold. A key stone. A key stone. Sorry, sometimes I just I can't help myself. I've got to repeat it if it sounds good. <laughs> uh, for crossing into the threshing floor. So the threshing floor, that's where you sort through things and you burn out. That's where the wood hand stubble is burned out of the body and the gold, silver, and costly stones that are what the new Jerusalem's made out of, the bride that made herself ready, are purified. In that threshing floor where the fire comes, that is what we're eventually what becomes a holy of holies. Um, so two more things quickly. So also, as a ministry and as a fellowship, you've removed stones from the womb of the church. So in Bible times, in order to prevent conception, they would put stones inside the womb of livestock and sometimes even woman to prevent conception. And these are, it would bring barrenness. And so this speaks of removing the hindrances and removing the blockages. But now is the time of conception. It, like, uh, just like when the angel came and spoke over Mary. Um, I'm just going to read the exact words. The angel said over Mary, and this is what he's saying over this congregation, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God because he's birthing the living Christ in you. That is the pure white light. That is the inheritance. It's the birthing of all the power of the living Christ in you. That is our inheritance. So I bless you today in the name of the Lord. I bless you as a neighbor. I bless you as a neighbor. And I proclaim that you will come into your full inheritance, that the power of the Most High will overshadow you, and that the full light of, of uh, the living Christ, the full light of the kingdom of heaven will shine here, that this will be a place where a gateway is opened up, just like in Genesis 28, that word gateway is also, it means portal in Hebrew. And he said, surely the presence of God was, was in this place, and I wasn't aware of it. And suddenly he saw the angels ascending and descending, and he called it Bethel, house of God, gateway, portal to heaven. And I proclaim, Lord, a portal over this place, an open door, a gateway over this place. Let the angels of the Lord ascend and descend and accelerate everything that you are doing in this place, bring the full expression of the kingdom of God and all the powers of the age to come. Let them manifest in this place. In Jesus' name.